Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The Bible tells us that from age 12, this is Jesus. Remember, the Bible tells us to look unto Jesus and it calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. At age 12, Jesus was found in the temple, even though he was the word incarnate, even though he was the word of God, he still found himself in the temple, learning and building capacity. By the time we get to Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says after his baptism he was driven of the spirit into the wilderness when Satan came to tempt him after praying and fasting for 40 days Jesus looked at Satan and he did not say I think he did not say maybe he did not say I'm not really sure he said it is written a product of knowledge when he met with the scribes and Pharisees, he began to teach them, is it not said in your law, this and that and that, but this is what I say. Knowledge is powerful. But very quickly for the sake of our discussion tonight, there are three areas of knowledge that you must have in order to rise, in order to shine forth. There are three areas. Please never forget these areas for the rest of your life. There are three areas. I call them three levels of knowledge, if you want to put it in another way. There are three levels of knowledge that every man on earth who desires to make impact for Jesus, every man on earth who desires to be used mightily by God to do much for the kingdom, and let me tell you it is God's desire for every one of us seated here and those following online or following by way of television everyone has a destiny in Christ and if you know what God has in store for you you will not spare to give your all and your best to live a meaningful and an impactful life say amen so there are three levels of knowledge that you must have are you ready now I will give it to you quickly and then we'll pray number one the first level of knowledge that is responsible for shining forth responsible for a life of impact is that you must know God that is the first level of knowledge the knowledge of God you must know God no matter what else you know if you do not know the God of the Bible forget about impact by God's definition if it is true that impact and shining or showing forth is dependent on knowledge then I tell you that the first kind and the first level of knowledge that you need is the knowledge of God Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 Daniel 11 and verse 32 the B part let me quote it very quickly for sake of time Here's what the Bible says. But the people, but RCCG youths that do know their God, he said they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. <laughs> now listen carefully. Do you notice that that scripture never said, but the people that do know God, the people that do know their God two things will come into their life and will be expressed in their life number one is strength capacity stamina to survive all of the vicissitudes of life and then number two it leaves you with an assurance that they shall do exploits the people that do know their God in John 17 and verse 3 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray and in his praying this is what he said this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent
when you know God you will be able to stand and face the challenges of life with confidence and with dignity most believers want to explore destiny and the faith life and they do not pay attention to knowing God cultivating an experiential and a functional relationship with the God of the Bible listen to me this is more than just being born again this is a deeper experience being born again is the first and most important but not the only there is a deeper level it says my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you there is the stamina and the confidence that happens to you when you know God when David stood before Goliath it was not just the strength of his sling that gave him confidence he said you come to me with your bows and your spheres but I come to you in the name of the Lord God whom you have defied do you know God can you say I know him let me give you one other scripture we are still talking of knowing God in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 Ephesians chapter 1 we are reading 15 to 19 please write it down very important scripture Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus and he said wherefore I also after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints 16 he said I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what was the prayer request that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him verse 18 the eyes of your understanding he says verse 18 being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints the last verse now 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power when you know God then you know his power then you know his love then you know his integrity then you know his consistency there are things you can never believe until you know God now watch this a few of you here I presume by the privilege of God's grace know me here and if someone suddenly comes up here and tells you I am Joshua Selman because you know me you would look at the person and say no 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 this is not the person we know is that true yes. when you know God you know what he can do and you know what he cannot do how can I call on your name and end up in shame no way that's the God that we serve how can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. Because you are my God. Someone prophesied upon your destiny. You are my God. You are, you are, you are my God. You are my God. Listen to me the basis of our confidence in this kingdom is not in anything physical your life is already at a risk if your confidence is based on money if your confidence is just on your qualification as important as these things are the believers confidence it says I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded it is based on the knowledge of God that you can dare the devil 
you can dare destiny i may come from a background where nobody has known about me you may not know me but the god that i know will force you to know me the god of heaven when you know god then you will know that god is love when you know god you will know that god is all powerful it says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the lord so when god sends you to go to a place where there is no physical connection you will not be afraid because you know the one who backs you it says yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me they looked unto him and he said their faces were lightened you are my god now listen very carefully i know that there are people here who come from all kinds of backgrounds there are some of you if you depend on your physical background respectfully speaking there may not be any leverage there as far as an enviable destiny is concerned let me bring you a word of hope ah this god bar listen i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is true I will worship him forever. His God is The one who can pick him, an ordinary person. No background, doesn't matter. Nathaniel said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Ah, look this God I am telling you he can pick you from wherever it does not matter what kind of family you came from I'm speaking to you if you invest in the knowledge of God then you have made an investment towards a destiny of impact a life that indeed will shine forth listen to me we live in a world today where people boast of all the things that they have and for someone here you may not have the privilege to boast of a very very exceptional or wealthy family you may not even have the privilege of boasting in terms of exceptional education or all of these things but when you come to this God you see among the many things that he gives you is his life do you know what it means to receive the life of God this life that I have is a life of God. This life that I have is a life of Professor, one more time. This life that I have is a life of God in me. This life that I have is a life One more time, Professor. This life that I have life of God in me. This life that I have is the life of God. So it's 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 so life that I have is the life of Christ. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life is the life of The first level of knowledge, if you want to live an incredible life, let me tell you the truth when you give your life to jesus you cease being an ordinary person this is not a preacher's suggestion it is the integrity of god's word for god so loved the world the bible says that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have knowing God has an implication of having such as I have he said number two very quickly is God speaking to someone the second level of knowledge that you need the first being the knowledge of God the second level of knowledge you must have in order to be able to shine forth is that you must know yourself knowing God is powerful as far as your fellowship as far as your rising as far as your communion and your spiritual orientation is concerned but in addition to knowing God you must know yourself oh you must know yourself Psalm 49 and verse 20 write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life Psalm 49 and verse 20 you must know yourself Psalm 49 and verse 20 here's what the Bible says man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perisheth it's important to know God because in the revelation of God is the revelation of yourself you may know yourself in terms of your background you may know yourself in terms of your tribe you may know yourself in terms of your earthly family but it is important that you understand your spiritual identity and I want to show you from the Word of God two things that the Bible says about you number one John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 please give it to us quickly John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 you must know who you are there was a man sent from God whose name was Joshua Selman there was a man look at the origin someone prophesied say sent from God say it about yourself sent from God I know that you may call yourself a Yoruba person an Igbo person a Hausa person an European uh, you know a, 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 an African all of those things are just the physical geography but the Bible traces your origin he never said there was a man who came from his mother or came from his father the Bible did not even say there was a man who came from God you did not come you were sent that means God is not scratching his head wondering what you will do with your life there was a space allocated for you sent from God sent from God when you arrive the earth they gave you all kinds of names they called you Joseph they called you Abiodu they called you whatever they, you, is your name but let me tell you the truth you must understand that you came from God and the Bible says he that cometh from above is above all listen this is a mentality that changed my life that means there is an advantage I have beyond my background there is an advantage I have beyond the geographic reference you may associate me with we live in a world today where one of the biggest problems of young people is identity crisis the inability to have a scripture based understanding of who you are unfortunately we live in a world today that prides in suggesting all kinds of things if you do not know who you are the world has a plethora of templates that they will make you pick anyone from there are people who have become weak because the world told them they were weak there are people who have become mediocre because the world told them that remember when the spies the 12 spies returned back some of them brought an evil report and they said we were in our own eyes like grasshoppers 
he never said we were in the eyes of satan he never said we were in the eyes of god like grasshopper based on our own perception this is our conclusion that we're like grasshoppers and caleb stilled them and said let us go up at over what you know god has made you you see that our generation is bankrupt of conviction we can become anything depending on who is talking no there are many of you god is raising you to be the next apostles and prophets and evangelists but right now you are about to give it give up that noble call because of some ill-informed respectfully speaking arrogant people who are in ignorance who want to downplay your passion and your fire for god some of you will be the next politicians some of you will be the next heads of government and while you are walking in the path of discipline and responsibility that leads to this kind of enviable destiny there are ignorant people who cannot do much in your life but will downplay your passion and commitment i remind you this life that you have is the life of god in you this life that you have is a life of god listen the next time anybody wants to bully you out of your conviction out of your identity you don't need to fight don't waste your time trying to defend yourself the bible says haven't done all to stand stand you don't have to fight and quarrel and insult people no 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 if someone looks at you and feels you are stupid no problem did they not think joseph was a fool but later on when he became prime minister there are some of you those who are laughing at you now one day they will open the door of an office to seek for help and guess who will be seated there and the same tongues you were praying while they laughed you will still be praying it in the office the same bible they laughed at you for holding will still be on your desk there while you are ceo i won't go back can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me i won't go back can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me please hear me by this admonition god is already speaking to someone you have already come too far the world is making you look like you are wrong receive the grace to continue receive the grace to continue many may be making you look like a fool for being a prayerful person receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for being a disciplined young man or disciplined young woman receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for loving the word of god and being a student of scripture receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for turning down supposedly nice opportunities to honor your convictions i assure you at the end of it god will compensate you hear me there are some of you right now you are about to lose your identity simply because of friends apostle i'm tired of being alone can i tell you there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother it is better to walk alone and be in the right direction than to walk with a crowd heading nowhere did you hear what i said it is better to walk alone and be headed the direction of destiny than to walk with a crowd that is bankrupt of vision and going nowhere please sit down as we wrap up number one the first level of knowledge you must know God number two 
you must know yourself you must have a spiritual orientation about who you are now that you are in Christ I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor so I know who I am number three please write what is the third level of knowledge you must have to live an excelling life that shines forth are you ready you must know your place in God's program and in destiny these are the three levels of knowledge you must know your place in God's program you must know your place in destiny so number one you must know God number two you must know yourself in light of the knowledge of God that you now have but number three which is equally important you must know your place in God's program you must know your place there are many many people who know God to an extent there are even few who have had a healthy understanding of who they are but many have not found their place in destiny in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 here's what the Bible says 16 and 17 very instructive scripture as we prepare to pray the Bible says and as he came he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up the Bible says and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read verse 17 very powerful scripture verse 17 Luke 4 17 the Bible says and there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah's and when he had opened the book hallelujah he found the place where it was written when he opened the book he found from the book the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me when you read from verse 18 he found it and when he read it he now closed the book the eyes fastened upon him and he said this scripture is fulfilled that means i have found my place let me tell you the truth it is risky to sojourn this earth in confusion as to your place in life and destiny and in god's program we are celebrating our father in the lord today and our mother we are celebrating the mighty things that god has done and continues to do across the globe through the rccg simply because a man found his place it is powerful when you find your place because when you find your place in god's program you have found security when you find your place in god's program you have found the basis of your confidence it is dangerous to assume your place you must find it you can't just assume this is my place uh -uh. let me announce to you by the authority of scripture that there is an allocation for everyone in god's prophetic pro program there is nobody here under the sound of my voice and for those watching by television there is no one upon the earth who does not have a place in god's prophetic program but you see let me tell you the truth your place cannot be left vacant forever if you refuse to occupy your place god is able to give your bishopric to another person that is why someone can begin a ministry as an evangelist and later up end up carrying other responsibilities the added responsibility was given to him through faithfulness because of someone else's assignment that he refused to do it's in your bible he said his bishopric let another take oh may no one replace you in destiny may no one replace you in destiny hallelujah
do you know why finding your place in destiny is very important because destiny is like a relay how many of you have um seen those in the track and field running and when there are four people running a relay when one person starts all the other three are at the mercy of that one person is that true they are ready they are willing you even see some of them jogging but if the person to come is slow and is wasting their time he can delay the destiny of all the rest how many people's destinies have been delayed now because you have not found your place imagine if mary did not find her place imagine if joseph did not find his place imagine if jesus did not find his place imagine if abraham did not find his place esther paul who wrote two-thirds of the new testament he said lo i come let's 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 read that that, that chapter hebrews 10 and verse 7 lo i come 10 7 hebrews lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will when i found out that by the privilege of god's grace that i have a place in god's program i have a place in the revival that is happening i have a place in steering my generation to love and know god when i found that place i was happy and this is what i do all my life this is why i live and if it pleases him this is why i would transit to see his face all my days on earth i will await the moment that i see you face to face for nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the cup that will run dry listen hear me you are seated here today and you are getting blessed your being blessed is a result of someone finding his place in life and destiny you must find your place you want to show forth there is an allocation for you there are some of you a few years from now you are the ones who will be standing here and you are going to be preaching to others and you will tell them many years ago i was seated there there are some of you you will travel from nation to nation carrying the gospel and the power of god with signs and wonders betting revivals across territories hear me there are some of you you are the ones who will become the billionaires and be supplying resources for the kingdom activities there are some of you you are the political leaders that will be enacting policies that make the territory safe for the gospel and safe for advancement and safe for development there are some of you you are the educators who will be training the next level of leaders please hear me by all means find your place by all means find your place it is a risk to not find your place listen carefully roaming around and wasting your time in unreasonable activities unreasonable relationships unreasonable distractions is only eating up your destiny i hope you know the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving a part of your life to hallelujah i want you to listen very carefully to this song i'm, I'm about to sing and then we'll pray whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whoever 
you want to change Lord you can change through me and here's the reason I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Lord Jesus I'm yours forevermore listen whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift through me whatever you want to start Lord you can start through me and whatever you want to end Lord you can end is that someone's prayer I'm your Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore now hear me whoever you want to heal Lord you can heal Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change me. That is what it means to find your place in destiny. Lord, if there is someone who needs healing, Joshua Selman is available. Lord, if there is someone who needs to know Jesus, Joshua Selman is available. Lord, if there is a nation that needs revival and that the fire of God falls upon it, Joshua Selman is available. Do you need me to give you a prayer request or are you already praying? You must find your place in destiny. You must find your place in destiny. Listen. Please listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to make a covenant with your destiny tonight. That visionless living comes to an end. Make a covenant with your destiny. That anything that wastes my time, tonight is the night I wrap it up. I don't have time for distractions, time for waste. There are millions depending upon your destiny. Here's what the Bible says. It said, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame someone open your mouth and begin to pray father I obtain grace grace to invest in the knowledge of God grace to invest in knowing myself grace to invest in finding my place in your prophetic program for the nation someone pray a man of God who is rising pray a businessman who is rising pray a student who is rising pray a visionary who is rising, pray. Hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. Listen. I want you to pray and say, Father, the same way you walk with our Father, 
and guided him to become what he has become today guide me also guide me by your spirit lift your voice and pray guide me also by step by season guide me also by moment by decision guide me also you guided our fathers lord guide me pray guide my generation pray Hallelujah. Listen very carefully. Please listen. I'm wrapping up. Now, I want you to listen. Hear me. As we celebrate the revival that is hitting this nation, the continent of Africa, our fathers have prophesied this revival that before Jesus returns, there will be a massive awakening. An awakening like we have never seen before and we are already seeing this move of the spirit across the nations of Africa and believe me from Africa we are exporting this revival exporting it to the nations of the earth revealing Jesus in a dimension that has not been seen and experienced before but please hear me please hear me before Jesus returns the army that God is going to be using will be separated into three categories i need to say this and then i wrap up number one the first formation of this end time army that will usher in the last move of god before the return of jesus the first dimension of this army are called prophetic intercessors there are men and women who like honor the prophetess they are people who will master the ministry of priesthood and the mysteries of the altar. There cannot be revival and the genuine move of God until there are a people who give themselves continually to prayer. Not just me giving prayer. Lord, give me this tea and bread. Prayer for nations. Prayer for territories prophetic intercessors and I know that some of you here that grace and that mantle has been looking for you prophetic intercessors watchmen that are placed upon the wall that will give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem to be a praise people who will pray down fire upon nations pray down fire upon generations number two the second category of people are those that the Bible will call the sent ones. These are the ones who will be sent everywhere across what you know to be the seven mountains. Pastors, business people, politicians, educators, family people, career people. They may be serving across the territory, but they are people of conviction who love the Lord number three the third category of people that form this end time army are called the kingdom financiers they are the ones anointed by god with grace in the marketplace to make sure that the program of god is not delayed because of financial limitations these are people who will be trusted with wealth it will not just be wealth from business god himself will make them his treasurers and they will fund his program across nations. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching